amazing work. And we're going to, uh, today we're meeting Bill Homan along with Catherine and the official Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. From the ancient land of Atlantis or perhaps Sirius, the distant star in our galaxy or simply a rare and mystical artifact buried for over a thousand years in Belize, the Mitchell Hedge Crystal Skull has awed scientists, shamans, and people of all walks of life for over a hundred years. Bill has a 10th degree black belt and he's a grandmaster and the keeper and the guardian of the priceless treasure that thousands of testimonies relate has changed their lives for the positive. I'm going to go ahead and just say a little bit also individually about Catherine, just in case you haven't had a chance to watch the episode with her. She, she is the author of over 40 published books. I am so amazed that even one of her books became a movie for Hallmark. And she has um, many, many books and has written things about angels and all the, the romance novels, a lot of fiction and nonfiction. So she's in her right, a master teacher of all areas. And she also brings in a lot of the energy with the angels. And today we're going to talk about the Crystal Skull, which is, as you know, Mitchell Hedge, and we're going to talk about angels. So with that, I would like to bring both of you on, Catherine and Bill. Hello. 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 Good to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. It, it means a lot to me and to all the listeners and the viewers that you are here. What I'd like to do is begin about the, and I met Mitchell Hedge and I will share my own personal experience and I'd like to talk a little bit more have Bill share with us or Catherine both of you of what you can share about how powerful and how unique and original Mitchell Hedge is well it's, uh, you know there's a lot of legends that go around it and one is you know it's here at a time that the world needs help and uh, I think we're there right now. And, you know, the way it's helping the world, it, it works on opening people up to remember, remember who and what they are. Because, you know, we've been here and we've been through so much, but a lot of it is we've forgotten, you know, forgotten our real essence of who we are as soul, as spirit, and what our real purpose is here on the earth. And so, with the skull, it has a way of, especially when you work one-on-one -on -one like this, it it uh, mirrors the inner self and opens people up to it. And that's uh, remembering is what is one of the main things. But it also works in joy and bringing through joy and peace and love. And that is a powerful force, force to make a difference in the world. You know, if because we are creator beings, we create everything in this world, either good through thinking bad thoughts or positive by working on good, positive things that we want in our life. And so uh, it's a matter of taking charge of our life and putting this joy and peace and love in it. And uh, by focusing on that, uh, we're bringing it and changing it. Now, if I help one person and that person helps somebody else and this one, and this one, it, it spreads out and we can make a difference in the world and bring us into, instead of thinking about all the fearful things that are happening, but keeping our minds in balance and thinking about seeing a world that has possibilities for peace and joy and, and happiness and prosperity, all that is, is, the only thing that we're not having it is because we're not creating it. So it's a matter of taking back our power and putting that joy in your life and following the joy because that that makes everything happen. And it makes it happen in a way that, you know, if you have a choice of something bad in your life or something good, I think, hey, let's do some good stuff. It's it's a pretty good thing. So that's that's what's happening. And that's what we're opening people to and pushing right now. And it's really important because that's exactly right. We have to keep the vibrations high and be in joy and gratitude 
for all we have because that energy absolutely raises the collective consciousness. And that's really important with all of the changes going on um, that will continue, whether people study it or not, or they understand what I'm talking about, they, they will continue. And we know that. Um, we know we know that. We've known that for a while. And so the crystal skull, I do want to share a little bit about my experience. Um, and I want to thank you both for graciously letting me come to your home and 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 really meet uh, Mitchell Hedge. And I was able to, I call commune with him. And while I did it, I could have gone deeper, but I knew I had to get in the car to drive. And the yeah. energy, like I could feel like shift, 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 and literally feel. And, and I knew that if I went much deeper, that I might pass out not in a bad way right but i would be like oh i'm really um wherever i am you know it, it was that intense but it did it has opened me up a lot and helped change my life in really positive ways and um you know it's um it's absolutely magical powerful um it is something that you just feel very calm with, you know, mm -hmm. it's good yeah. energy that really helps humanity. So thank you very much for that. Um, oh, it's my, it's my pleasure and my joy. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> each one of us have these gifts and if we find out who and what we are and come in balance with that and follow our joy, you know, each, each one of us, you know, I, I, I found my joy and I since I figured out what I want to be when I grow up and which is a kind of nice thing uh it took me a while but uh <laughs> the thing is is with the skull and working and going around the country and seeing different people it's I see how it affects people and how it changes their life in a positive way and it's a really good feeling you know if you can if you can do that but each one of us have that gift in themselves to make that same thing happen in a way that's made only for them because each one of us is not the same, but each one of us has these special gifts. So coming and finding that, bringing it out and becoming, uh, there's nothing better than, you know, helping people, helping humanity, helping yourself and bringing joy and love into your life, your family's life, your friends and whole, the whole world too. So, yeah. Yeah. Could, could you, one of you share the um, more personal aspects of Mitchell Hedge, especially if there's viewers, listeners that have not heard um, how unique the crystal skull is? Because that's something that is very unique, very different. Yeah. Well, I just, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It, well, it is what makes the skull so different. Nobody knows who or how it was made. Uh, it came uh, from a uh, pyramid that had been buried over a thousand years in, in British Honduras, which is now Belize, is what the, the legend has been passed on to me. And so that's from the, the person that had it in the beginning. So I, I keep that, I keep her story going is how it was found. And uh, but it's made against the grain, which is impossible and because it's it's very hard. It's number seven on the hardness scale, but it's brittle. So if you don't do follow the grain, it wouldn't be here. It would just shatter. And then another thing, it's made uh, with lenses and prisms built inside the crystal. And to be able to do that, it would take zero gravity. And they do it now on, on a space station up in space but they're building crystals like almost like one atom at a time. And so have something this big and this perfect and, and building one atom at a time, it might take a couple of years, I think, or maybe, maybe a million, I'm not sure. But if you put a light on the bottom of it underneath, because of that 90 degree turn that's in there, it takes the light up and then shoots it out the eyes. So if you were a, a native in the jungle and they had some light, uh, fire or something underneath and all of a sudden it came up you'd uh, probably jump pretty good when you saw the skull shooting light at you you know 
but uh, it has uh, uh, dolphins in the cheekbones. If you look at it, it's hard to see on here, but there's a head, the tail, and the fin. And there's a dolphin on this side and a dolphin on this side. And so this is like the double dolphins. And that's like Lemuria, where they say that you see a, in a, like uh, different shops where they have something. They say, oh, this is Lemurian. It's a crystal ball sitting on a on a pl uh, plate or whatever. It has two dolphins in the sides. So that that kind of represents the Mitchell Hedges skull. When you look at the back of it, it's like you look into a whole different world that takes you into. The, you can see like two halves of a human brain inside. And if you look in the eyes, and I think you you've experienced that, haven't you? It takes you into this different world, and uh, it's a world of crystal and light, and it's like a whole a world of, it's very peaceful. And the skull, that's one of the things. It's not rough or hard. It's its so gentle. It just, it's just there, and uh, it sends that, that gentleness, that light, and it touches people's hearts and makes them remember about a time when that's the way the world was and makes people want to say, yeah, I think that was a pretty good time when we had all that good stuff going. Let's go back, you know. Let's make it happen again. <laughs> yes, yes, um, definitely. Okay, Catherine, can you share some of your views about uh, working with Mitchell Hedge? Um, <clears throat> well, there's quite, uh, several different levels, and I'm going to continue on with what Bill was saying is that most people that we've, you know, work, when we've been working together that see and, you know, spend some time with the crystal skull, just like you did, it is that peace and that joy and the love that you feel that comes through the skull. But it literally, to me, it raises you almost to that angelic level where the vibration is so high you all, I mean, we've had people say, I've heard music, you know, um, I've, or I've heard, you know, like a vibrational thrumming or humming or something like that, that it is, it, it, it shows you how high you can really go. You don't have to be the, all that, all those negative energies and emotions that you have just do not serve you. That's one of the things that I think I see a lot was where you're just like, well, why am I, why am I being so upset about something when I could really spend more time being in that place that the skull brought me to, you know, that, that angelic realm. And that's why many times when I look into the skull, when someone is here, I, I'm shown angels and then that angel may have a message for um, the person who is here, you know, having an, having an experience. Um, sometimes it's just, I can literally hear him talking and saying, you need to tell them this. And sometimes he'll say, don't say anything. Don't say anything. And so um, I just follow what I'm, what I'm told. And, it, 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 and Bill always says, every single person is different. Every experience is different. There are some generalities. Yes. Just like near death experiences, you know, there's some generalities to it, but everybody is different because every soul is different. And there's different things that every person has their own personal challenges or blockages or, or, uh, ties they need to cut or whatever and he's going to bring that out he'll help clear that that's what bill does so incredibly well is clearing away blockages from uh, people that just got stuck somewhere and you know can't make a decision or you know just don't know which way to tell or can't remember what they need to remember and that's what he does they both do so very very well so yeah yeah but the whole thing, like I say, is joy, and, and the skull has a sense of humor. So yeah, it does. Yeah, you, you never know, and it, uh, it, you know, it comes through pretty, uh, pretty funny sometimes. Uh, yeah, this one time Bill was getting ready to do a show, and and we were, we had been, you know, five places, and all of a sudden we we're like, oh my god, you know, we've got like five minutes before the show, and he's running around, and the 
Skull sitting here and, and he says, how's everything going? And I said, oh, wait a minute. I've got to go get the brush and brush your hair. And I literally heard the skull say, I don't need a brush. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the type of humor. That's yeah. the kind of thing, you know, and, and several times you're like, when we get ready to go on a trip, he's going, do I get to go on the road trip? <laughs> you know, is this train or what? <laughs> that kind of thing. So. That is, that is really neat. And, and, you know, the skull does have a spirit. Everything has a spirit. Yeah, a sentient being. He's a sentient being. Mm -hmm. Yes. I feel like the skull actually has a soul, part of the whole. Um, yeah. As it takes in, it's, it, yes, it's the full potential of the universe and beyond. Yeah. And yeah. we all, and, and one thing that makes it so unique is we all have our own genetic coding and um, what I noticed and found out is that by being in the energy of the skull, that um, the skull helps to activate, turn on, we can say turn on some of the DNA. And we're talking, I talk mainly about the spiritual DNA that yeah. science does not really talk about, but I do believe it could help um to heal someone physically. Have you noticed that before? Uh, you know what? Uh, we don't say it. Uh, somebody comes, they want to be healed. You know, you can't tell it what to do or whatever, but I have a lot of letters from people that, uh, you know, they acclaim, they, they came and uh, all of a sudden they're like, they're changed. Like this one guy had a fused neck and he just came to with his wife and a few other people. And he just came because he was the driver. And he said uh, he didn't believe in any of this. It was all his wife's thing, and but he wanted her to be here. Well, you can tell you can bring <laughs> And he was very adamant. He, he he did not come in, you know, in the room where everybody else was. He stayed, he hung out in the kitchen, you know, far back and just, you know, observed. He didn't say a word. Everybody, you know, had a little something to eat, you know, snack, and then they all left and because they had to drive back to southern Indiana. And um, by the time they got home, he said, you know, I didn't say, and he had had an operation to, to fuse all of his problems with his spine. It didn't work. He was very upset. He was in pain. And when they got home, he said, well, I didn't say anything, but he said, as I was standing there and you were sitting with the crystal skull, he said, I literally heard all of my spine pop into place. And when he drove home, he had no pain. And it's the first time he had been without pain in months and months and months. So that's... Yeah. Well, the, you asked for a story, but we don't usually tell stories because, you know, we can't say, oh, it does this. Because we don't know. But also we don't... Uh, but we, I do know a lot of people that couldn't get pregnant for a long time. And uh, uh, the, the skull is... They, they feel the skull is pretty... It made a change in their life, life big time. Yeah. yeah. So anything's possible. We that's not really what it's all about. It's all about, you know, bringing in uh, the joy and the and the love and opening that in people's hearts. That's the whole thing. You know, and, well, you can, oh, and having fun. And yeah. having fun. Yeah. But one of the things I believe is that when he does bring in all that joy and love and peace, and you and like Bill said, as you get that balance that's in you. When you have that balance, it's just like then other things in your life balance out. And of course, if you've got the balance in your life and you weren't getting pregnant, well, you know, maybe now you're relaxed enough to make that happen. That kind of thing. It's just like that gentleman was he he didn't you know, he didn't believe in anything. He didn't have to believe, you know, that we've had those kinds of stories, even in the Bible. You don't have to believe it. I'm just going to make it happen, you know. Well, and oh. that is right. And that's when I said that it activates or it turns off or it turns on, but it on. doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't right. matter. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't. It it's we are so powerful. The energy that who we are, you know, made out of the we've got the God gene in us. So yes, we how do. could we not do wrong? How could we not benefit, right? Yeah. So, it's just connecting to something that is such a high vibration. Right. That is helps not yeah. Remember your power and who you are. Yeah. That's so important. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And it's almost like 
it's um with the crystal skull i mean well we it's just very powerful i don't know another <laughs> perception would be it's very much into the quantum energy but i don't know if we want to really talk about that and i'm just talking my perception of what i'm getting so that's that, you know, you can be in that energy in many different ways. Yeah. Um, def, definitely. What else do you guys do? I know we talked a little bit about angels before the show. You want to share anything about the angels? Well, let's see. We've been working with angels and, and the different entities. People have these entities with them. They're guides or protectors, but so many times nobody asks for help, you know? So you walk down the street and you walk into a wall and you back up and shake your head and you go again and you keep walking into the same wall. But all you'd have to do is, is ask for your protection from your, your guides, your angels, and you get it right away. And so it's just a matter of, of realizing that they are there to help you and they do it out of this great love. Mm -hmm. And by just opening up and only thing you really need to do is just be grateful and say thank you. And that's so much of life is anything that happens, you know, if you can be grateful to it, it's like uh, a flow of, of water coming down the hill. When you be grateful, it lets the flow come better. And if you have things coming to you, it's kind of nice to have happy things, right? It, well, it is. It really is. And angels are so, um, well, they're just so much love. Yes. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean that that's what it's about. And I really feel we need to spend more time and and call in our angels. And um definitely. And like yeah. you say, the gratitude being in joy, joy is an extremely high vibration, pure love, divine light. Um, we're fortunate right now that anybody watching this can feel, probably can receive just it doesn't matter how many miles away you are, you can feel the love of the skull because the skull has a lot of, it's just pure love, you know, it yeah, pure love, mm -hmm. definitely. And we all can use a little bit more love. <laughs> oh, for sure. And Kath has written like four books and, and, I, and yeah. all on angels. And uh, she's, uh, a lot of them were uh, past life stuff where she people come back. So I'm going to let her, tell you a little bit about the angels thank you yeah, yeah the there are the stories you know my books are very different from most of the angel books that are out there they're trying to describe the angels and who they are and their names and all that and mine are personal stories that people have had their own personal encounter and what that encounter was, whether it was a near-death experience, a dream, an angel showed up. My favorite stories are the stories where the angel was literally at the door. And then as they were walking away, they're watching the angel walk down the sidewalk and just vanishes in front of their eyes. I love those stories. And I have a lot of them. And um, it's very interesting to me, you know, who will write to me and tell me a story. And I've had several pastors who have said, you know, I never wanted to talk about angels because I was because I was afraid of the derision that I would get from my congregation. And I and I'm happier, happy now that more people are talking about their angels. But, you know, just to simplify the whole thing is all our lives, our mothers, all our hopefully our, our mothers always said, just say please and thank you. Please, would you help me, Angel? And thank you, Angel, for helping me. How simple is that? It's just that simple to really get some magnificent, magical, incredible, and loving help. I, You know, that's exactly right. If we would remember that we all have guardian angels and we have other angels around us. And, yes. and they are here to help us for sure. And as you said, if we would get in a habit of asking for that help, because they're there saying, I'm here, I'm here, call on me. And they won't, and they will not work until you ask them. They have to be asked. That's a universal law. Yes. With free will. We have to, we have they to, for sure. Have to ask. Mm -hmm. no. We are um, at the end of our show. We just, I, we have time for another question or another question 
or well, something you would like to talk about? Is that how would you, anything else you would like well, to? Yeah, there was uh, you know, we you know we go with the flow. We go and meet people in different places, and some of the things we do is we have adventures, and uh, we have an adventure coming up in September where we're going to go to Ecuador, and there's these uh, caves down there called Las Calos, and they are the ones that Armstrong went in 1975 looking for these ancient uh, Sumerian or whatever discs that are gold discs with knowledge written on them that was supposedly left there. But we're going to go down to that same cave. You have to rappel in uh, 225 feet before. To... I know, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, first you take a you're taking a small boat up down the down the Amazon, mm -hmm. we get to the place, then you have to go two mm -hmm. hours hike through the jungles, this this uh, this village that's uh, there. And you only get there because the the indigenous people that own, the indigenous own that whole area Land. and they have to allow it. So they've allowed this group to go in. So we're gonna go down there and, and go down and you're in this one area, it looks like almost as big as a football field under, under the ground. And it's like uh, there's a big dome rock, right? And there's uh, the area and the energies and such or such. It should be something you'll never forget. And hey, you never know. We might come up with uh, a golden uh, uh, scroll or anything. Anything's possible because it's a place where they consider there's ET connections, ancient ones, mm -hmm. and the ancients were there too. So there's that connection. So, uh, we're going to do that, but we're going to do it and we're going together and it's going to be, uh, well, you know, what would it be? It would be Indiana Jones and Joan Wilder. There you go. <laughs> Half wrote uh, Romancing the Stone, which is Joan Wilder. And then the Crystal Skull has strong connections to uh, Indiana Jones. So look out. We gotta, we're going to go down. If we're going to do it. Yeah. If you want to go down with Indiana Jones and Joan Wilder, an adventure just let me know <laughs> yeah do you ever write down your stories that you go all over the world and <laughs> i mean what you see what you uncover i mean what happens i mean gosh you're definitely indiana jones <laughs> <laughs> well you know what there's supposedly some very special scrolls in that cave that was, yeah. that came to us by psychic means that are supposed to be there so uh you know uh you can when you go on a an expedition like this you know i was on uh well, was old josh gates and they go out there and they say oh, we're looking for this and they dig a hole up oh, nothing there and then they say oh dig here but then uh, a friend of mine that's very psychic gets all mad because if he would have went over four feet this way and two feet this way he would have found it you know and so we're going to use that uh, psychic gifts to kind of guide us. So you never know what you might find on this trip. So just having fun, whatever it is. Well, you know, <laughs> so, sometimes you just have to not try and let it go, right? And let all go. Of a sudden, yep. the mm -hmm. answer comes to you. That's how, right. Catherine, how are you going to do this? You're going to be climbing down for, <laughs> oh my <laughs> You repel. You repel. Yeah, they they actually lower. You have a harness, and they actually lower you down. Yeah, yeah. you go. The first one is two hundred and twenty some feet. Then you get off, and you go. Uh, you go down a little bit further, and then you have to go down nine hundred more feet. <laughs> so you're at Middle Earth, you know, in the New Kingdom. <laughs> uh, hey, I think one of your adventures didn't um, a snake bite your shoe. You uh, had a pair of boots on or something. I was jumping. Yeah, I jumped out of the way just in time. Yeah, yeah. that was a poisonous snake. Yeah, yeah it was rattlesnake. Don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. We're not doing that anymore. Yeah. No, no. Oh, it sounds like so much fun. But a lot yeah. of times it's we do spiritual stuff, so we're you know working with the energy of the earth, and uh, yeah, and that's the skull. That's one of the things it does also is it uh, connects to the different ley lines and energy and it restores the balance, which, you know, the whole thing we need now is balance. And that's kind of where we're at. We're working with the male, female energy, getting it in balance. 
and that's the, we, the, where we're at in time because astrologically all these forces are coming together and we're coming into a, a new possible way of world and life and that everything needs to be uh, in balance. As long as it's out of balance, it's not going to happen, but we're working on that balance. Well, that is that is so true. Um, the balance is a very important um, because it's definitely been lopsided way too long. Yes, um, it has. Yeah, definitely lopsided. Anything, Catherine? Anything else you would like to add? Um, just love and light to everyone out there who is listening, and um, we really appreciate you having us on the show. This, I mean, we. We have a message for everyone, and that is, you know, if they do get to see the show and look at the skull, is to just remember that it is joy and love and happiness, and that the more you fill your life with the, those things, the more you're going to affect the, the raising of the consciousness of the whole planet. That That is so true. Do you want to end the show with a meditation like you've done before, or is that, I don't know. No, I that's something I love to do. So yes, okay. I do that. Okay. Okay. Just a short one, right? Just like maybe 10 yes. minutes or so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, we can do that. So what you want to do is that's one of the things the skull does. It's got that 90 degree turn. And so it takes you real easily and brings you up into a higher consciousness. So uh would you just relax and go with it if you'd like to follow this? Just Close your eyes and just put your mind right on your third eye. And as you do, just start some slow, deep breathing. Breathe in real deep, feeling that light and love coming into your body. Hold it, count of four, and then breathing out. Just take all the stress, anything, leave your body. And just do two more deep breaths, just like that. And as you're doing the breaths, I'm going to connect the skull with the other 12 skulls that we can do it right now, just by connect now. And they will. All 12 skulls will come in to a connection with a connection, connection, and then connecting to each other. There we go. And we ask all the divine help, masters, teachers, guides, angels, archangels, all that those heavenly hosts that want to join us be with us now in this meditation and i surround us all with this beautiful white light of love that keeps us all together in this envelope of peace and joy and so as you put your mind on your third eye and looking up into the heavens with your third eye just see this beautiful beautiful white light and as you see it, you feel it coming down, coming down towards you, coming down. And it will go right through the top of your head, through your body, right through the top of the skull, through the skull, through the into the earth, through your body, into the earth. And just feel that light and love going deep into the earth, deep into the center of the earth. And as it goes down, it touches right into the heart of the mother. And... The mother has so much love for you, so much love for the earth. And you just feel that love coming back up, coming back into your body, coming back into the skull, and just let that whole thing light up with light and love. Now expand it out. You can feel this energy. Just let it starting to spin and get higher and just start going up with the energy, up into the sky, up and towards the heavens. All of us coming together with this light and love. And now just as you see the earth below you, you're able to send energy through your hands. And we're going to spread that energy out around the earth. Send it out on the earth. You do it with your mind and your heart. And as you think it and feel it, let it go. And send this beautiful diamond white light, this beautiful sunset pink light of universal love. Oh, there you go. And 
Now you can see this energy coming out your palms. This energy is white, beautiful light. And you can take it and you can use it to heal anything that you see that can use the light, the love. You can see hunger. You can, you can see war. You see peace. You see he, uh, hurt all through the earth. And you are able to go anywhere you want in the earth and spread your light and spread your love. And it's yours to do, and you're free to do it. Go now. Send the light. Send the love. Okay, let's bring us all back together now, bring us back together.
as we're back together, I want you to think and send out, send out this love and light of things that you want for all the joy and the peace and the things that you want, the good things you want. You can have or be anything you want. Put in your mind and see that for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your country, for your world. Just send out that love and light. Do it now. Okay, bringing yourself back together again. I want you to feel the energy and light coming back into your body on the count of five. Count of one, just feel the energy start coming back, flowing through your body. Two, just let it flow through out your fingertips and toes as you're coming up. Three, three, feel the love, feel the light. Four, you're almost back. Now five has been counted whenever you're ready. Open your eyes, come back, feel that happiness and joy and love and light. It's yours. God's love. Connection between the other 12 skulls. Open now. Much blessings to all those that have joined us and helped us today together. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, that's what we do. It's just send out that good stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it helps there. You know, if you have a business, it helps your business to yes, be in the light and to stay balanced and, ma and balance your masculine and feminine energy. It really does. And, yeah. and plan forward and good stuff. And you make the things happen. You're the creator. Yep. Yes. And that's, um, you both have had highly successful careers. So if there's anything you want to leave, uh, anything else before we go with business? Um, I just want to mention our um, website. It's www. Bill Homan and the Chris Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull or just a dot com or www.mitchellhedgescrystalskull.com or just Mitchell Hedges. Oh, it's Mitchell Hedges too. Mitchell Hedges. All of them get you yeah. there. Yeah. So. I will have the information on the show also. So. Oh, that's great. All right. That's thank great. you very much. Oh, thank thank you. you. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.